Hello, this is Ayman Ghazeli from the SQL Pro. And today I have a very special SQL snack for you. It is the first of a series in performance tuning SQL Server. And for this specific video, we're going to discuss baselining your system using the PAL tool. So PAL tool stands for Performance Analysis of Logs. And you can just search for PAL tool in your favorite um, search engine and then go to the uh, CodePlex site. Uh, you need to do a couple things here. First you need to download the software. You also need to install the prerequisites. There's uh, technically three of them. So you need to make sure you have PowerShell 2.0 and over and higher. Sorry. You need the Microsoft chart controls for .NET Framework 3.5 and then you actually need the .NET Framework 3.5 with Service Pack 1. There's two installs here. One which requires an internet connection and the other one which doesn't. So once you've finished uh, downloading and installing all the prerequisites and the actual tool, you need to start up the tool. And it can be a little bit intimidating because there's a lot of different tabs here but what you really need to do for your first run through is you need to go to this tab that says threshold file and select the version of SQL Server that you have um, I'm just going to select 2008 and R2 because I'm using a 2014 machine here um, these counters can be used for SQL 2012 and SQL 2014 if you would like to add more counters to this template uh, feel free to edit and add whatever you want. These are actually quite good for uh, baselining uh, general SQL performance stats. So I'm just going to take this regular template. And what I need to do is I need to export this as a perfmon template file. So I'm going to select to throw it on the desktop here. save it and when I hit save this pop-up is going to come and it's going to ask me about the name of the instance so if I am deploying this on a on the default instance then I can leave this blank if I have any named instances that I'd like to track um, you know performance stats for then I'm going to put it in here for cluster servers you need to put the um, you know the cluster name and the FCI name as well so just keep that in mind. I'll click OK because I don't need any of that. I'm going to actually close the PAL tool right now and I'm going to open perfmon and you can do this by just going to your start menu and, and, and typing perfmon. So I just had it open already. So anyways I'm going to go to my data collector sets and I'm going to create a new data collector set here I'm going to create it from a template and I'm going to browse to that file that I created I believe it was this one yes and I'm going to click next it's going to ask me where I want to save my data I'm just going to pick the default location you can change that if you like and then um, I'm just going to save and close. I'm going to right click on my new data collector, go to properties. I'm just going to make sure that everything's set up properly. I can actually set up a schedule and stop conditions for this specific data collector. Um, for you know size or time or, or whatever it is that I need. There's also something um, that may be wise to configure. If you right click here on the data collector and go to data manager, you may need to you know, make some of these values a little bit larger because if you're going to record on a busy system, you may need more than a gig of um, storage 
for that specific perf mod counter lock. So just something to keep in mind. There's a lot of different uh, things that you can set up here. I'm not going to get into all that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start this data collector tool and then I'm going to set up a workload on my server and I will come back and show you how to put it in the PAL tool. Alright, I've given this um, data collector enough time to collect some data so I'm going to stop it. And one of the things you can do in Perfmon is you can actually view a report for what you just uh, recorded. It's pretty simple. Um, but you know, if you just wanted to kind of see how long the collection was when it started and, and then that sort of thing. Anyway, so we will go to the PAL tool again. And this time we are going to go through the entire menu. So we're going to go to next. We're going to select the path of our perfmon counter. I saved it in the default location, which is perf logs. And I'll go to SQL PAL test. I'll open up my perfmon log. If I wanted to, I could restrict the um, date and time range for the PAL report. So let's say that I recorded about two days worth of data and I just wanted to restrict it to one day. So I could select this and it'll pre-populate the time from the beginning to the end and then you can start narrowing it down. Again, I'll be back to this threshold file tab and I'm going to select the same threshold and this time I'm not going to export. So basically the first time we exported it as a perfmon template so that we could capture the data using those perfmon counters. Now we're going to put that counter in and we're going to use the built-in template as a threshold file to let us know um, what recorded stats are within a specific threshold. That way we can determine our server's health. I'm going to uh, input the PLE health, which is the page life expectancy. There's a basic formula of, um, you know, it's supposed to be, as they say back in the day, 300 seconds, which is approximately five minutes. But on different servers, that number may not be applicable. So I believe it's Jonathan, uh, Jonathan. Kios, I believe is how you pronounce his name, from SQL Skills, uh, put out a, a decent formula where he said basically for every four gigs of memory it's going to be uh, 300 seconds. So, you know, if you have eight gigs of memory divided by four, right, well, yeah, zero divided by anything is not going to work out. So 8 divided by 4 is 2, obviously, and then times 300 seconds. So you're looking at about 600 seconds of page life expectancy on a system with 8 gigs of RAM, and you know, so on and so forth. So if you have 256 gigs of RAM, you want about you know 19,000 seconds for page life expectancy. And there's not a hard and fast rule, uh, just something to kind of be aware of. So 1,000 is more than enough for, for the server that I have. I'm going to select the operating system and I'm going to select how much physical memory is on the machine. I believe this machine has 1.5 gigs of RAM. And then this user value um, should be set up for a 32 bit system. But there's a 64 bit system, so I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go to next. On the output options, I can select my analysis interval and I can select to process all counters in the log. This is going to take a lot of time if this is selected. Uh, I'm going to leave this on auto. Auto works quite well. File output by default is going to output it to my document. Uh, you can also select an XML output if you want. This shows you the PowerShell um, 
command that's going to run to produce a PAL report. And then this final tab here gives you a couple options. You can execute as low priority, you can add more threads. If you have a multi-core processor, uh, you may be able to add more threads to process this faster. And then you have options to execute now, add it to a queue, or um, you know, execute and restart. So I'm going to click finish. And this PowerShell screen is going to come up. And it's going to start processing my PAL report. I'm going to pause and come back when it's done. All right, our report is complete. So what we'll see in the um, command prompt is the execution duration and a bunch of other stuff. And as you notice, it took about 12 minutes to execute this on 10 minutes of log. So um, I would highly advise that you do this off of your production server. So record your logs uh, for Perfmon on production servers for baseline, and then do the analysis on a dev server or on a local machine or something else. Anyway, so here's the PAL tool. Um, it's stored under my documents by default. Let me show you what that looks like. Here is the PAL reports. And as you can see, I have two PAL reports. Um, this is the one that I just created for this demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this and it'll open up in a browser. So there's no need to go into any of these folders. And if you want to make this report portable, make sure that you take the HTML file that corresponds to that folder, zip it up, and you can start saving it and, and sending it to um, other DBAs and developers for analysis. So the report is divided up into two different methods of analyzing the data. First is by like chronological order. You will see how many alerts between these time frames and how many warnings. Warnings are orange, alerts are red. And it's also divided by the different counters. Uh, first, you're going to get the OS counters, cache, logical disk, memory, etc. And then you're going to start to get the SQL counters here. And it's just arranged that way, you know, because it's by alphabetical order. So you will get some more system counters at the bottom. Some of the counters that I wanted to point out are specifically in the buffer manager, the buffer cache hit ratio and page life expectancy. Two very important SQL memory um, counters. There's also the section for SQL statistics, batch requests per second and compilations per second, very important counters. I'm actually going to show you how easy this is to use. If you click on a section, it'll automatically navigate there. And then it'll have a description of the counter, and it will tell you what the threshold is expected to be and how to resolve it. And this is for almost all of the counters in here. Some of them aren't this detailed. Some of them have links to different sites where you can read more about it. For this uh, specific counter, I wanted to show you something kind of neat. Batch request per second on its own um, has some value, but not as much value when it's compared to SQL compilations per second. So what you usually want is you want to make sure that SQL compilations per second is 10% or lower than SQL batch requests per second. So, I mean, it's simple math, but what the PAL tool does is it shows you the compilations per second, batch requests per second, and then it shows you the ratio here. So here is the compilations per second, batch requests per second, and then it shows you the, the ratio and it tells you that it's more than one compilation for every 10 batch requests. So it is more than 10%. And it'll explain to you under the section how to fix that. It'll recommend using force, or force parameterization. Whew, it's a mouthful and optimize for ad hoc workloads. It also mentioned about um, you know other things you can look at. And the same goes for, for some of these other counters. You'll see recompilations per second. It's also compared to batch requests per second. And it, it, it's kind of nice like that because what you can do is you can kind of you know take a snapshot of this and send it out to some of the developers and let them know what the issue is exactly. Uh, instead of having to beat around the bush and, and figure what, 
what things are. The PAL tool is great in comparing different counters that have meaning with each other, or rather have a relationship with each other. One of the other nice counters is the physical disk read and write latency per second. You'll see it spreads it out by the different uh, physical disks that you have. It tells you what the drive letter is and the response time. Um, it does it for, for write analysis as well, which is great because you want to kind of pinpoint which disks are, are performing better than others. And by knowing the path, you also can determine um, you know, whether it's your my log files are on drive Y, for example, whether it's my log drive that's slow or my data drive that's slow or my backup drive, you'll see on the backup drive um, there's no problems because I haven't been running backups here. So uh, it, it, it's a great tool, very robust. As you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff to look at for performance tuning. And what I would recommend is when you get your baseline and you start performance tuning, then to use the PAL tool again so that you can see if there have been any improvements in the changes that you made. Hope you found this useful and happy performance tuning.